Hello viewers, welcome to another edition of Tech Tips. My name is Basir, and this week we will be talking about sub-assemblies. MWF allows you to create sub-assemblies out of members of the opening, stud packs, uh, basically any group of elements that you'd like part of a sub-assembly. This week we'll be talking about how to create these sub-assemblies, how to modify them, uh, etc. And then next week we'll talk about how to implement these sub-assemblies into, into their own separate drawings for manufacturing purposes. So, in order to create a sub-assembly, we would need to create what we call a sub-assembly catalog. The sub-assembly catalog can be accessed via settings, sub-assembly catalogs right over here. And as you can see, I went ahead and created, so you have the default system. I went ahead and created a catalog one by just creating a new one right over here. I could go ahead and create a new one if I wanted to. The rest is just basic office stuff, deleting catalog, renaming it, and exporting and importing any of these catalogs to send over to your colleagues. Within this catalog, I've created groups. These are mainly for naming purposes for when you're doing your drawing. So I've created SA1 and SA2, for example. I could then apply SA1 as, for example, this box header could be applied to the catalog SA1. And then all of this other opening can be applied to SA2, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When you're creating SA1, let's say, for example, I'm going to go ahead and create subassembly three. When creating the subassembly three, simply hit OK. You can then choose what you're naming, what type of naming you'd like, either by instant name, in which case it just gives it a name uh, that's derived from the panel name. So in this case, it'd be panel two dash, and then another number for whatever number subassembly it is. If you have one in there, it's going to be panel two dash one panel 2-2, two two, et cetera, et cetera. You could also have it by the member schedule label or the member position name. So you select what type of naming convention you'd want for that particular sub-assembly. Once you've created the sub-assembly catalog, remember this is just a one-time thing. You could always import and export these sub-assemblies uh, and have it on different projects, different computers, etc. We're going to go ahead and save our catalog one over here. And we're pretty much ready to start labeling these sub-assemblies to those particular catalogs. Now, in order to create a sub-assembly out of this, there are, two, there are three ways of doing so. First one will be through particular markers. So, well, the two first ways are through particular markers. We have what we call the latest marker that we have is called the multi-system marker. I've created variations of them by duplicating the multi-system marker and created box header 1 and box header 2. Simply double click on it. Uh, we, we've previously created another tech tip explaining in depth how that box header, uh, that multi-system marker works, how you can use it. So please refer to that if you need clarifications on anything. But basically I could go ahead and specify my header settings, my sill settings, jam, as well as the rough opening basic marker stuff. But the option we have over here is we have the option of making it into a sub-assembly. This is pertaining to the header top of opening, which I've configured as a box header, and selected option one comprised of these four members that I could then select each individual family of these box header as well as specify what type of uh, what catalog that I want to assign it to. So I went ahead and assigned it to SA1 and I've set to turn it into a sub-assembly. Once we've assigned it I could then specify and say that I want to make apply this marker to this opening and it created that box header for me as you can see right over here. The other option we have is, once again, via certain markers, we've created the option to 
this little checkbox to turn into a sub-assembly. This will turn all the members of the opening, header, sill, jam studs, as well as the cripples, into a sub-assembly that we could then, the goal is to produce individual shop drawings for each sub-assembly for manufacturing purposes. So I've had that checked and I've associated that marker to this one. Now, in order to visually see what our sub-assemblies are uh, and how many we have in the project, etc., we have under our manufacturer uh, tab, we have our manage sub-assembly button right over here. And as you can see, within this panel two, we have sub-assembly panel two out of one that belongs to configuration catalog SA1 and we've given it a name panel 2-1. It's comprised of four members. We can then select it just to visually see what members are comprised of that sub-assembly. If I go back into it, I could then select the sub-assembly panel 2 out of 2, which is the name it's given, and actually see that all of these members are part of that sub-assembly. The third way of applying a sub-assembly would be to essentially uh, manually select elements and add them to the sub-assembly. Now let's say for example this box header sub-assembly panel 2-1 I just wanted to add these two cripples as part of the sub-assembly. I could go ahead and do so by simply selecting these two cripples and simply saying add element to sub-assembly. It's going to ask me what sub-assembly I want to add it to. I'm just going to say the, the first one over here and select it. If I manage my sub-assemblies again, you'll see that my unassigned members was subtracted by two members, from one from 18 to 2, and this one went from four members to six members. And if I actually select it now, those cripples are included as part of that sub-assembly. You would create a whole new sub-assembly by selecting two uh, random members and saying create a custom sub-assembly and naming it to whatever you'd want. Now there are other ways you can use create sub assemblies such as for example the extra vertical marker. If we go into our markers under framing verticals, we have that extra vertical marker that we could go ahead and assign as part of a sub assembly and assign a sub assembly catalog to. Wherever you see this option, you're able to go ahead and assign the sub assembly catalog. It is also present inside of the markers inside of the panel properties, excuse me, uh, wherever you basically have a stud pack configuration, you're able to assign that sub-assembly catalog to. And that is the way to create these sub-assemblies. Next week we'll be taking a look at how we could take these created sub-assemblies and produce individual shop drawings for them uh, to essentially have a shop drawing of the whole panel and then have individual shop drawing for the sub assemblies to be built by another uh, in another station. Thank you very much, guys. Until next time.